What's up everyone, welcome back to another video with the Millennial Finance. Touch and Go just released this new product called Go Plus. What is it? And is it something that we should consider? Watch till the end to find out. Cha-ching! With so many e-wallets in Malaysia, Touch and Go is actually the one that I use the most every single day. It used to be boost because they gave us a lot of cashback and it was even to the point that I got cashback just for topping it up with my credit card, but those days are gone. The good old times of every single e-wallet giving us unlimited amounts of cashback is over, so I've settled with using Touch & Go as my primary one. To be honest, I don't even really use the other e-wallets anymore. I mean, to me, Touch & Go makes the most sense and I don't mind depositing a lot of money in because I know that eventually I'm going to spend it anyway when I go through tolls. Let us know down in the comments below which is your favourite e-wallet in Malaysia. So when news came out that Touch & Go was releasing something new in their app, I got excited. When I found out that it was something that was related to investing, I knew that I was going to try it straight away. Essentially, Touch & Go now enables its users to earn interest every single day on the balance that is in their e-wallet. To do this, they of course had to partner with another financial institution because Touch & Go isn't really in the space of fund management or investments. Their partner for this is none other than one of our favourite fund managers in Malaysia being Principal Asset Management which is a subsidiary of CIMB. So, whenever you leave your money in Touch & Go's Go Plus, you're in a way investing in Principal's eCash Fund which is a money market fund. All of these financial institutions seem to be finding ways to really push this money market fund product out there and it's not really a bad thing. Usually, these investments are reserved for people who have a sizable amount of money with minimum deposits around a range of 10,000 ringgit. Now, they're looking to scrap all of that. Stashway Simple is doing it with eSpring Investments, Versa with Afin Huang, and now Touch & Go is partnering with Principal Asset Management to push out this money market fund product to the masses. Again, I think that this is a great thing because even though the returns are not great, they're a different kind of asset class that was previously not accessible for most people with small amounts of capital. Later on in this video, I'll do a brief comparison between these three products so make sure you stay to the end to find out. Before that though, who's eligible to sign up for Touch & Go's Go Plus? If you have a Touch & Go account, are above the age of 18, and is a Malaysian, then you're pretty much all set to start your account. The sign up process was extremely simple for me and I got everything up and running in under one minute. I don't know why when I read the FAQ, it shows that you have to do a bit of verification, you know, take a picture, share your IC, but I didn't have to do any of that. Even if you did, I still think that it's a very easy process and you can do everything online. The minimum deposit for this is 10 ringgit, so it's low enough that most of us should be able to put our money in it. Now here's one of the best parts about this fund, it's extremely liquid. In fact, it actually allows Touch & Go e-wallet users to finally have the option to withdraw their money from their wallet to their bank accounts. As far as I know, no other e-wallets in Malaysia, including Touch & Go before this, has ever had this option. Remember the days when you go out for lunch with your friends and you pay the bill and they want to transfer you money in Touch & Go and you're like, no, I can't withdraw it in my bank? Well, those days are over. On top of this, you can use your Touch & Go e-wallet freely even though your money is in the Go Plus fund. To explain this a bit further, your money won't automatically be put into the money market fund unless you decide to. Touch & Go now holds two balances, one being the main e-wallet balance and the second one being your Go Plus balance. For you to earn a daily interest, you'll have to click on the Go Plus button in the app and then move your money from your e-wallet account to the Go Plus account. The best part about this is you can still use your e-wallet freely even though your money is parked in your Go Plus account. For example, I had around 100 ringgit in my main e-wallet balance that I moved completely to the Touch & Go Go Plus balance. I'll show you an example here where I had to pay a toll of 2 ringgit and 50 cents and the Touch & Go app automatically withdrew 2 ringgit and 50 cents from the Go Plus balance and moved it to the main balance before using it to pay for my toll. All of this is done automatically so I didn't have to do anything about it and it's great. This means that there shouldn't be any reason that we hold our money in the main balance and we should move everything to the Go Plus balance even though it earns us less than 1 cent a day. Personally, like I said, I've already moved all of my Touch & Go main balance to the Go Plus balance and I feel like this is a no-brainer. I don't really like giving out advice like this, but this is just one of those things that it just doesn't make sense not to do it. So, 
how much money are you going to get for leaving your balance in the Gold Plus account? Unsurprisingly, it's not going to be that much. This principal eCash fund was made specifically for the partnership with Touch & Go, so there isn't much historical data for us to look at. The fund pays out returns to investors daily though, meaning we get the benefit of daily compounding. Their payout also fluctuates every single day, and this fund hasn't even been open for a month, so I don't think we have enough data to go off of to decide how much they really pay. Based on a check that I did on 31st of March, the fund paid out 1.54% on that day, which isn't much, but it's good enough to make me happy. As you can see in the screenshot, I've already made 2 cents since I started this, so I'm well on my way to buying my first ever Lamborghini. One very important thing to remember is that the 1.54% stated there isn't the return you're going to get every single day. If that was the case, I would move all my money to the Touch & Go Gold Plus, but obviously this is too good to be true. What it means when it says 1.54% is this is the return you're going to get annually. So what you're actually going to get in terms of percentage returns is this 1.54% divided by 365 days since it's paid daily and the number is so small that I'm not even going to try to say it. In terms of fees, there's no sales charge but there's an annual management fee of 0.45%. This number is already deducted before they pay you out, just like any other fund, so you don't have to worry about forking out your own money to pay them these fees. Also, the fund fact sheet shows that this fund has no capital guarantee, meaning if they go bust, you will lose all your money. I wouldn't worry too much about this because the possibility of a money market fund going bust is extremely rare. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible, but extremely, extremely rare. If it does happen, then there must be something fundamentally wrong with our banking system and there's a lot more for us to worry about than this 100 ringgit. At this point, I can't find what exactly they're investing in, so I can't really do an analysis on that. Regardless, this is just a normal money market fund, so I don't think there's much analysis to do anyway. Some of the normal stuff that they would do is probably put it into a savings account, put it into other money market funds, or putting it into a fixed deposit. All these investments are again very, very safe, so the potential of us losing our money is extremely low. So now that I've touched on Touch & Go's new Gold Plus investment feature, how does this all compare to Stashray Simple and Versa? For me, they're completely different propositions. Stashray Simple and Versa are meant for people who have spare cash and they want to put it somewhere with low risk but at least generates them a bit of returns. Their investment horizon for this is not so long but not so short that they're going to spend it in the next day or two. They're great users for emergency funds and that's actually exactly how we use it. We move some of our money from our bank accounts which pay very very little interest rates to Stashery Simple or Versa. On the other hand, I wouldn't consider Touch & Go's Go Plus to be in the same category. They're more of just an added benefit of leaving your money in their e-wallet. You see, when I put in 100 ringgit into my Touch & Go e-wallet app, it's not for the purpose of it being my emergency fund. But you know, I'm going to use it. I know I'm going to use it whether it's the next day or the next week. And I wouldn't really think that people would take out 10,000 ringgit just to put it into their Touch & Go app just so they can make this 1.5% every single day. If you don't have any intention to spend this money anytime soon, then I would recommend that you put the money somewhere else like Stashery Simple or Versa. This is more of like, you know, since I already have money there, why not I earn a bit of interest while I'm waiting to spend it? So we're comparing two key features. First off, Gold Plus is much more liquid than Stashery Simple and Versa because you can spend the money freely anytime you want. The other two platforms that I mentioned will require you to submit a withdrawal request and then you gotta wait for the money to go into your bank account and then you can finally spend it. This process will probably take two or three days so you can see that it's not really comparable to Touch & Go's Gold Plus. Because of this extra liquidity, it's natural to assume that Go Plus will have a lower return than Stashery Simple and Versa. This is evident based on what they're projecting, which is around the 1.5% mark. So, in a nutshell, Touching a Go Plus is more liquid, but it pays less returns. To me, this is completely fine because I'm putting it there for me to spend anyway, and it's not really something that I use as, you know, like a cash reserve or an investment. It's just an added benefit and it gives it an extra edge over other e-wallets. So, what am I going to do with this new cash management product? First of all, I'm already a Touch & Go e-wallet user, so it's not like I have to start downloading the app, signing up for an account, and learning how to use it anyway. If I was more of a grab or boost kind of guy, then maybe I might consider even switching all of my money to the Touch & Go e-wallet. 
Usually, I have around 100 ringgit in my Tyson Gold wallet and I top it up every single time it reaches around the 20 ringgit mark. I spend a lot of money on tolls because I travel to work pretty far every day, so this makes sense to me. With this new feature, I maybe consider upping my deposits from 100 ringgit to around 300 ringgit since I know that I'm going to spend it anyway. It's also fun to see my returns rack up every single day even though it's very little. Slow and steady wins the race, right? As I said earlier as well, I'm going to continuously move my e-wallet balance from the main one to the Gold Plus because it's simply a no-brainer decision. Whenever I top up my wallet, I'll be moving that as well. Now, having said all of this, we all need to know that this new feature by Touch & Go is exciting, but it's not going to be making us rich. This asset class is more for wealth preservation in its natural form, but how Touch & Go is using it is very interesting because it's like an added feature to try and beat other competitors in the market. Also, I'm really excited for this launch and it's not just because of the returns I'm going to potentially get. I've been waiting for a while for the e-wallets in Malaysia to finally integrate some sort of investment feature into their apps and this is finally the first step taken in what I think is the right direction. Last year, Grab actually acquired a robo-advisor called Bento and I believe they've implemented this in Singapore. Let's see if this is brought into Malaysia so it provides some competition and possibly opens up regulation where more and more of these e-wallets can start introducing investment features and maybe one day we'll start to see some of these finance super apps like Alipay in China and Cash App in the US. What do you think about Touch and Go's move to introduce the Go Plus feature? Would you use the e-wallet just because of this? Let us know down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this video to the end. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.